My parents came to Australia from Lebanon to get away from the war that was happening at the time. And they came here to restart their life. As a migrant, when I first arrived at Australia, like, I, I, I struggled. It was very difficult. They wanted to give us everything they never had. That was their plan from the beginning, so my, my parents sacrificed a lot for us. For decades, Lebanese families come to Australia to build a better life and escape the destruction of war. But many are demonised in their new land. Can you call me your Lebanese dirty bastard? Get rid of this multiculturalism, because that is only dividing us also as a nation. Then, after 15 years of immigration from Lebanon, Anglo and Arab Australia is divided by the first Gulf War. They're being confronted with a choice between being either Arab or Australian. Because up to now, the multicultural story is, you're both. Are you Arab first or Australian first? I already answered this question. I'm an Australian citizen. My loyalty is to Australia, and I shouldn't be asked about this. I'm trying my hardest here to be accepted as an Australian. I can't do anything about the black hair, about this skin. It's the way I was born. In the 1990s, a tiny criminal minority become drug-dealing gangsters defying the law. These gangs will be wiped out. In 2001, Terrorism raises fears that Arab Australians are an enemy within. I'm looked upon as a terrorist or as a rapist, you know what I mean? Five years later, anti-Arab tension explodes into one of the most infamous race riots in Australian history. It's not just a few Middle Eastern bastards at a weekend, it's thousands. We have been in a pressure cooker effect for 30 years. The people converged on Cronulla Beach. Oh, shall we get the hell out? What happened on that Sunday in Cronulla is a black eye for our country. This is a story about who we are. Am I Lebanese? Am I Australian? What am I? I don't know. I am Australian. I am Lebanese. I am Muslim. I'm a mother. I'm a daughter. I'm a child. I am all that in one. It's the story of what it's like to be Lebanese and call Australia home. We are Australian and this is our homeland, and this is where we belong, and this is what we are part of. <laughs> Residents say it's part of an outbreak of violence here, which they blame on local gangs. Growing up in Punchbowl was very ugly. I didn't know how to read, I didn't know how to write, and I was born in Australia. As a young teenager in the late 1990s, Zaki Maller's knowledge of Australia is confined to a suburb demonised by the media as a centre of Middle Eastern crime. When my family came from Lebanon, um, they moved to the Punchbowl area. They couldn't find work because they looked woggish, they looked Arab, they looked different, they sounded different. Um, the white Australians would, would be like, you guys don't understand our language. Bugger off, go back home, we don't want you here. They felt secluded, isolated, segregated. For a brief period, Zaki goes to Punchbowl Boys High where many of Lebanese Australian background feel outsiders in the country of their birth. We were so excluded, we were so away from the standard of society. I was a rebel because I didn't know what it meant to be an Australian. I knew that I was an Arab I knew that I was Middle Eastern, and I knew I was a wog. When he's 13 years old, Zaki's confidence is shattered by the death of his mother. I didn't acknowledge that my mum passed away, even though she was dead and confirmed dead 
by the doctors and the nurses, it didn't sink in. This is my mum, this is my mother. This is the one that brought me to this world. She gave birth to me. She looked after me, she fed me, she gave me milk and everything. And now all of a sudden she's gone. And I said to myself when I was looking at her, looking at her at, on her deathbed, you know, take me with you. Don't leave me here in this cruel world. Four years later, his father passes away. And I knew that I was all on my own. I, it, it's just me versus the world. And that's the truth. Emotionally isolated, suffering from the death of his parents, Zaki Mella is on the path to becoming the first Australian charged under new laws to combat terrorism. Every nation in every region now has a decision to make. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. The enemy in the war on terror was to be radical Islam. And very quickly the word radical disappeared. And in the popular mind, terror was associated with Islam and Muslims, most of whom in Australia were Lebanese, most of whom in Sydney were Lebanese, were therefore potentially a direct and immediate enemy. We were treated like we were all suspects. We were all under suspicion. I remember I was walking home from school from the bus stop and this was just around when September 11th happened and I remember um, a man spat at me. But I really didn't get phased by that. It didn't affect me in any way. I just thought that was his issue and he was ignorant. But as the daughter of community leader Jamal Rifi, Nimat Kabutli is soon aware of what the attacks mean to Lebanese Australians. All of a sudden, we are being victimised, vilified, and marginalised due to the actions of somebody somewhere who believes a certain thing and has a grudge against a certain nation. And all of a sudden, that impacts on me and apparently what I'm supposed to think and the type of person that I am, and it doesn't. By getting that, that negative perception from the wider community, it also makes you question, who, what is it then to be an Australian? We become very paranoid about our neighbours. We start questioning them. We start interrogating them as possible threats and dangers. And in the process, we distance them from ourselves. We say to them, the thing that's important about you now is your Lebanese-ness or your Muslimness, not your Australianness. That's no longer apparent, no longer important. You are what we fear you to be. And fear turned to aggression is encountered by actor and film director George Basher on his way to work the morning after 9-11. I went, pulled in my van to fill up petrol and this guy pulls up in front of me and just cuts me off at the uh, petrol bowser. And he looked at me with you know, this dirty look <sighs> and he goes, terrorist? Got out of the car, I was fuming, you know. I really, I wanted to rip him out of the car and just built the living daylights out of him. I took it, I just, I just thought to myself, no, that's what he wants. I'm not gonna give it, not gonna give him, you know, the satisfaction of it. So I just looked at him, I said, mate. I said, you're an absolute idiot. I said, you want the petrol bells, you can have it. Doesn't bother me. I said, but I'm a terrorist. I said, I'm as Australian as much as you are, champ. Branded the enemy within, the loyalty of Lebanese Australians is questioned like never before. And Zaki Mala begins to see the vilification as one more reason for his unhappiness. I lost both my parents. Everyone left me. There was no one else around, sitting at home with my own depression, trying to figure out what to do tomorrow. And I felt compelled to be part of this so-called war on terror. 
You can call it radicalism, you can call it fundamentalism, extremism. I call it someone crying out for help. The effect on our community was very intense. After September 11, our young people have been under different kind of influence. It's no longer the getting rich quick, no longer drug, no longer heroin. It's even worse than that. It was religious radicalization. Zaki Mala is one of many vulnerable young Lebanese Australian men in Punchbowl but one of the very few who sees extremism as the answer to the despair and isolation. He spends long hours in a random search for enlightenment. When he doesn't find what he's looking for at the Lakemba Mosque, he seeks out radical clerics for advice. I wanted to find out why we have Muslims, my kind, engaging in acts of violence, whether it's hijacking a plane, whether it's blowing up an embassy, whether it's blowing yourself up and killing others with you. I wanted to know where are they getting this ideology from? Where is it coming from? A lot of these newly found religious leaders who have no formal teaching, have no formal training, who have no qualifications whatsoever. They were preying on vulnerable young people. And a lot of people were mentally unstable. Right then, I was just pretty much dead in the, in the brain. I was dead in the head. I needed answers. I needed some comfort. There was no warning, just a massive explosion. The bomb tore the heart out of Kuta, killing and maiming young tourists. One year on from 9-11, 88 Australians lose their lives in the Bali bombing. Once again, the Lebanese-Australian community feel demonised by the media. The Bali bombings bring that whole global violence home to Australians. For many young Australians, uh, Kuta Beach is almost like an extension of Bondi or Cronulla. Um, to have been attacked and destroyed there is extraordinarily shocking. There's a sense in which anger about Islamic terror is now domesticated. Now it's at home and people are really angry. That's when we felt the terror has hit home. We galvanised our efforts in support of those victims, and we did a lot of good work at that time. Now, unfortunately, the media, again and again, did not see us as a victim. They saw us also, at the same time, as part of the problem rather than the solutions. I went through the September 11th, the Bali bombings, the London attacks, we are the generation of news headlines. We are constantly reacting and being put under the microscope. We're constantly having to justify ourselves, place ourselves in boxes, change ourselves from the mould, start off on the back foot, convince the world of who we are. Um, all that while trying to maintain a normal Australian lifestyle. In this climate of fear, Zaki Mala chooses the wrong moment to play the part of Jihad Warrior. He applies for a passport to fly to the Middle East, saying he wants to meet a prospective bride in Lebanon. Alarm bells start ringing at the Australian Security Service. ASIO decided one day to give me a phone call, to call me up and say, listen, we're from the Australian Security Intelligence Organisation. We want to speak to you about your passport application. I didn't even know what ASIO was. A-S-I-O. Who are you guys? Never heard of you. I said, I've heard of the CIA. Are you the CIA? We are the Australian Security 